Hello everyone, today I'm here to share with you quite a big book haul. You know, it's that time of year where just books keep coming to my house and I'm not mad about it. So today's video is also kindly sponsored by Book of the Month. If you don't know, Book of the Month is a book service for you guessed it, readers. Each month their team vets so many books, like hundreds and hundreds of books, and supplies their readers with five choices at the beginning of each month for readers to choose from. Like I said, there's five selections each month for Book of the Month members, and they have a variety of genres. Romance, sci-fi, historical, literary fiction, non-fiction. They really focus on a lot of debut authors and also really um, up-and-coming authors that maybe you haven't heard of or books maybe that are kind of you know on the back burner that you haven't heard of a ton. They also have add-ons each month and if you're a first time member you can select one of the add-ons as your very first pick which is awesome. So like I said they have a great selection you can even choose their backlist books they have it on their site where you can see every single book they've ever put in their box and see every single book they've ever selected before and pick one of their past ones or you can skip a month in case you're not filling in the selections without any repercussions at all. If you're interested in the book of the month which I highly recommend you be because I really love their service I love trying to figure out which books come each month and I love the selections and love the variety of selections they have of the different authors of the different um genres and just trying to figure them out it's just so fun so I highly recommend you check them out and if it's your first time checking out book of the month you can use my code bookables at checkout to get your first book from book of the month for only $9.99 which let me tell you is a steal because we all know books are not cheap so definitely use the coupon code if you want to save some money and check the service out I highly recommend you do so so the first books I'm going to talk about today are actually their November selection so let's get into it and forgive me I don't know a lot about them because my like I always say my mind is totally gone and it truly is <laughs> first up is a little hope by Ethan Joella and this one I believe is a literary fiction one it's about a life inferring novel set in idyllic Connecticut town over the course of a year. It follows the intertwining lives of a dozen neighbors as they confront everyday desires and fears, a lost love, a stalled career, an illness, and betrayal. I do think, I do know this one has um, a big thing about cancer in it, so if that's a big trigger for you, which it is for me, just know that going into it, but it's a very short but sweet one, and it's going to be like an intense one. Then we have a fantasy book, and that is a key, The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker. I love this cover. So this one, like I said, is like a fantasy. It's half British Reaper, half Japanese Sh Shigami, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, and it follows Ren, who's been collecting souls in the London streets for centuries. Determined to earn respect, Ren attempts Ren accepts an impossible task, find and eliminate three dangerous yokai demons. With help from only her brother and a new ally who might be less than trustworthy, Ren will learn how far she's willing to go to claim her place at death's side. So it sounds really interesting. And we all know I have not been the best about fantasy this year, so I really want to check this one out. If you've heard of it, let me know. Then we have a super fun one, and that is and that is How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. I think it's every woman's dream because Keanu Reeves is just amazing. Um, so it's all about um, a character named Bethany who's gonna crash Keanu's wedding and try to convince him to marry her because she's convinced they are meant to be. And so she goes on this big road trip to go stop his wedding and go, who goes with her but like this guy named True and he has a big crush on um, Bethany and yeah because with Lou anything is possible even going on a completely outrageous and an excellent venture to find a perfect man or where she finally realized that the perfect man has been right by her side all along. You can obviously see where it's gonna go but I mean the fact of the whole book you know going to stop Keanu Reeves wedding is just sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a mystery thriller and that is The Collective by Allison Galen and this one sounds really intense so it's basically all about this mom who is angry and five years after her daughter's death is still obsessed with a privileged young man she believes to be responsible and basically she finds this group called The Collective and it's full of moms who have lost their kids kind of in the same way Camille has and so she struggles to comprehend whether this is a role-playing exercise or terrifying reality where she must decide if these women are truly avenging anger or monsters so it's all about moms and you know as a mom myself I feel like this book is gonna really hit home and it's gonna really like be like whoa but it sounds really intense and dare I say something that probably may already happen may exist I don't know <laughs> Then we have a literary fiction novel, I believe, and that is The Family by Naomi Krupski. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, I don't know why this cover gives me like really um, big um, 
what was that? The Sopranos vibes for some reason. So basically this is a book, two daughters, two families, one inescapable fate. So it's about two girls that have different families and I think one of the um, girl's dad dies and so their bond kind of um, gets really broken. And it says, it's a sweeping saga that offers the fresh take of an old New York, the American dream, and what it means to inherit the wounds of past generations. So you have so many different genres in those five selections. You have a romance, a fantasy, a mystery thriller, a literary fiction. Like, there's a lot of different genres for you to choose from. So that's why I love Book of the Month, because they just don't send out five thrillers or like five sci-fi. They really go with a wide variety of genres which I love and adore that they do. Also there are two add-ons this month in case you're interested and especially if you're a first-time member you can select either one of their add-ons as your first-time pick which is awesome. So their add-ons this month, one of them is Will by Will Smith. I'm sure you've heard of him. This is his autobiography all about his life and things like that which is awesome because I really love autobiographies when it comes to celebrities. For some reason, I'm a sucker for them. So this is going to be very, very interesting. And the other one is My Body by Emily Radagowski. I'm so sorry for pronouncing that horribly. So this is, um, she's an acclaimed model and actor and an engaged political progressive and a formal entrepreneur. So basically she, um, about the debut of a writer brimming with courage and intelligence. So I think it's also another kind of autobiography that goes about her life while investigating the the fetization of women's beauty, the obsession and concept with their sexuality, the perverse dynamics of the fashion and film industry, and the gray area between consent and abuse. So very, very going to be hard hitting and very informative. So, you know, so many great selections of book of the month. I highly recommend you check them out if you haven't done so already. Just try them out for a month. If you don't like it, that's okay. You can try it out for a month for only $9.99. Literally, there's not a lot to lose with it. So I'll leave all the links down below for you to check them out and learn more about them. So getting on to the rest of the books. I bought three books this month because, you know, I will say that my physical reading has just, <clears throat> sky just dropped. Um, I read 99% of my phone now. I read a lot of my Kindle, but now, especially the newborn, just reading on my phone with all my Kindle app is just way easier. I've even gone to the lengths of going on my library's website if I have any physical books and seeing if I can check them out on like overdrive and read them as ebooks because I just can't really use a physical book right now and that's okay this time will pass it's just how it goes when you have a baby anyway so I only have three books that I bought the first one being The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik so this is a sequel to A Deadly Education which I read last year and really enjoyed um it's a adult fantasy novel and it's all about it's kind of like harry potter but not it's all about the school where a lot of deadly things happen like you are going to be lucky if you survive this school and we follow a character named l i'm not sure i forget her name <laughs> It's been a long time um, and she's navigating it and she's also meets this guy named Orion who's kind of like the Harry Potter of her school that always like saves everybody and she kind of hates him but he likes her and it's all about their school year and all about magic. It is a very dense book like good gracious it is full of info dumps info dumps and upon info dumps but somehow I really ended up liking A Deadly Education. I like the writing and I do really like Naomi Nyovic's writing style but she's just very info dumpy when she writes so I I got through daily education and I really like the characters. I like the magic system. So I'm really excited to read this one. I'm already on hold on my library's website for an e-copy. Like it's going to take probably months to get on it because holds are crazy on <laughs> but I'm excited for this one. Apprehensive. I do know this is the second book and there will be a third book in the series. I think that'll be the last one. And then I have a book that I think I may have hauled last time. I literally can't remember. So if this is a repeat, just ignore this. And that is The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a sequel to The Inheritance Games, another book I read last year and really enjoyed. Obviously what sold me on this series is the co the covers are just beautiful. So in this book we follow a character, I forget her name, Avery, and she is not doing really well. She's like living kind of with her sister in her car and you know she didn't have a parent figure or her mom or anything like that. And then she learns that she inherits all this money from this random guy in Texas and she's like, 
what? And so she goes there and she learns maybe he's a relative of somehow. Um, no, it's just a random guy that left her all this money in his house. But she has to stay in his house for like a year with all of his grandson that she's like, what gives? And so she's trying to figure out the mystery of this of like why she's gotten this money. It's very reminiscent of kind of Knives Out, um, just a Y version. It's a fun book. You have to suspend your disbelief. It's just a fun ride. I do believe this is the second book in a trilogy. And I have heard this kind of stuff from second book syndrome so we'll have to see but I'm excited to read it. And the last book I bought was because of just the subject matter and that is The Empire, no just Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This could not be a weapon at all. It could be. Um, yeah this is an adult make sure I tell you that it's an adult um, fantasy book because I think a lot of people confuse this book and Never Night with YA books and they are very like very adult books. So this one is all about vampires if you haven't guessed it and that is why I bought it because you know your girl is still loving vampires. Been loving them since I was 14 since Buffy so I mean just let's just keep the love going. I'm gonna go into my 40s and 50s loving vampires with no shame at all. So this one I don't know much about. For the nearly three decades vampires have waged war against humanity building their eternal empire even as they tear down our own. And then we have a character named Gabriel who is a member of a holy brotherhood dedicated to defending the realm and prison. Basically it's just you know and the quest for humanity's last remaining hope. So yeah, just about vampires and it's gonna be really dark and this is freaking long. Like how many pages is this book? Oh, it's got illustrations in it. Didn't know that. Um, hope that didn't spoil anything. I don't know. Uh, it's got like 730 pages. I'm also on hold for the library for this one. Will I read this in like a week? No, this is gonna take me like two freaking months. I don't know much about it. If you have read it and would recommend it, let me know. But I just saw Vampire and just, I'm just such a sucker for vampires. It is beyond ridiculous. So those are the three books I purchased. I have a lot from publishers and a lot of holiday books. So that's exciting. So our first holiday book is So This Is Christmas by Tracy Andreen. This is a YA book. And this is about a character named Finley who decides to go home to Christmas, Oklahoma, which is great. Um, so she sees um, author who is a fellow student at her New England prep school. So he kind of follows her home to Connecticut. And so um, author and his aunt have chosen to spend Christmas at Grandma Joe's um, inn where she lives at and so basically old secrets and new romances, hilarious near disasters and a Christmas miracle or two add the fun as Philly discovers that author is well kind of hot. So just holiday romances in general are just great. Another holiday one I have is A Season for Second Chances by Jenny Bayless. This is about a character named Annie who is a mom that is older, that her kids have grown up, she's divorced, she's kind of just fizzled out and so she decides to move to this really small town um, Willow Bay and she's a Nara by the Charming House and then she meets a guy and things like that. I read her other book that was kind of holiday-ish. I forget what it was called. Oh, The Twelve Dates of Christmas. It was okay. It's definitely more of a woman's fiction than it is a romance. Just so you're aware. Keeping up with the holiday trend, we have The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. So this is about two twin sisters that trade lives for the holiday season, you know? Netflix Hallmark movie right here. Um, so yeah, one of them's a chef and one of them I think is her, has her bakery and of course they switch lives and of course they fall in love with people that are there in the other lives and of course catastrophe happens when they learn the truth, you know, you can just go ahead and plot the whole movie from here and just probably figure it out. But goodness me, I just love a good holiday book. You guys know this. I have a whole holiday readathon, which sadly will not be happening this year. You guys know I have a newborn. It's just not feasible for me this year, so I apologize. But there's so many other amazing holiday readathons that you should check out. I highly recommend you do so. But we'll pick up next year. I promise you that. Um, this year is just it's a little tough for me. So I have two more holiday books and the first, and one of them is Nick and Noel's Christmas Playlist by Cody Hall. I'm definitely planning to read this one for the holiday season. So this is about Nick and Noel who are best friends and Nick comes home to his family um, Christmas tree farm to help out and he learns that his girlfriend cheated on him and so he's just kind of uh, and then he runs into Noel who is his like best friend forever and they kiss and 
everything just feels right. So it's obviously a best friends to lovers romance and I eat that stuff up like literal candy. <laughs> so I'm super excited for this one. It sounds really great. The last holiday book I have is a Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly. So if you can't tell this one's all about Diwali, which is great because I don't know much about Diwali and I really need to learn about it. So I'm super excited to check it out. So it's about a character named Nikki who has always made practical decisions. So this year she decides to like go to Diwali and just like have at it, like live life. And she meets a guy and they kind of just go on this kind of trip together and they grow their connection deeper. And basically it's all about that. And one type A da data analyst discovers her free spirits side on an impulsive journey from bustling Mumbai to the gorgeous beaches of Goa and finds love waiting for her on Christmas morning. Also talks about Diwali. So oh, gosh, just so many holiday books. I have plenty to read a book about Diwali this year and a book all about Hanukkah. So I'm super excited about that because I definitely need to expand. Um, you know, holidays. It's not just Christmas, obviously. Next up, I have a new book by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman, and that is Roxy. Um, I didn't read their other book, Dry. So this is about synthetic gods sit above us toying with our souls. We know them as drugs, but we feel them as an addiction, and we see the opioid crisis. Okay, this is going to be really intense about the opioid crisis. Okay. Um, basically, life or death, two siblings on earth are both racing towards a destruction that seems inevitable. And this is about the opioid crisis. Neil Schusterman write some intense books. You guys, you guys know one of my favorite trilogies is the Sive trilogy and that's kind of all about like deciding live, life or death and something like that. And that's all about deciding life or death and Neil Schusterman has a really great way with that. His last book with the sun dry was all about, you know, water running out and things like that. So he writes a lot of intense things. Next up, I got sent a paperback copy of the new edition of Landline by Rainbow Overall, which I have already read. So we got one book in this haul I've read already. So don't, Forget I raised the roof. Just, just moving on. Anyway, Rainbow Roll, Landline. A lot of people consider this a holiday read. So this is all about a married couple, Georgie. Um, so and their marriage is kind of falling apart. And it says 15 years ago, her boyfriend drove half halfway across the country to propose to her. And this Christmas, um, she's heading in the opposite direction. So their marriage is kind of falling apart. But then somehow like she um, goes home and then she finds this landline phone. And every time she picks up the phone, it's like the her boyfriend from 15 years ago or her husband. And it's all about their relationship and going back in time and figuring things out. So it's got like a time travel aspect that's just very loosely in it. It's a cute book. I would recommend checking it out for a holiday read for sure if you're interested. Next up is a fantasy book and that is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I have yet to read one of her books. I just haven't. Look how shiny. I haven't really been invested in them. So this is um about oh my gosh I can't even pronounce this character's name. She's training to be a gray sister a nun who cleanses the bodies of the deceased so their souls can pass on otherwise they will rise to spirits with ravenous hunger for the living. A zombie. <laughs> Um, so she would rather deal with the dead than the living. Um, so then her covenant is attacked by possessed soldiers, and she unravels the sinister mystery of saints, secrets, and dark magic. Interesting. So I'll have to check this one out. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just not in the fantasy mood these days because they're just not quick reads for me. I have to do that. And the rest of the stack is from Simon & Schuster, so I don't know much about any of these. They all came in a big box, so please forgive me. The first one being As If On Cue by Marissa Cantor. I have read a book by her before. It's a Y contemporary, and so it's about lifelong rivals Natalie and Reed who have never been on the same team, and they have to find, um, they have to direct the school's first ever written play together, and so yeah. <laughs> it reminds me, you know, it's just a classic hate to love book with, um, rivals with high school rivals. I love those for some reason, so I'll have to check it out. Next one is The Jasmine Project by Meredith Ireland. I love this cover. This one is about Jasmine who has a great life and her family set up this thing called The Jasmine Project. Use Jasmine's graduation party as an opportunity for her to meet the most eligible teen bachelors in Orlando. Oh, that's so cute. Um, so yeah, it's all about her family trying to decide her life for her, which I've read a lot of books like that as well. Then we have For All Time by Shana, by Shana Miles. This cover is so great. So Tamir is a musician, a warrior, survivor, a Fayard. He's a pioneer, a hustler, a hopeless romantic. Together, they have lived a thousand lives, seen the world build itself up from nothing, only to tear itself down. But Tamir and Fayard finally discover what it will take to break the cycle. Will they be able to make the sacrifice? 
Oh, very, very interesting. So kind of like a fantasy, if you will. It looks more like a contemporary. Then we have The Other Talk by Brandon King with an introduction by Jason Reynolds. So this is a reckoning our reckoning with my right with our white privilege talking about racism can be hard but basically i think this is a it begins the much needed conversation for white kids in an instant relatable and deeply honest account of his own life brendan offers young readers a way to understand one's own white privilege and why allyship is so vital and then we all start by doing our part today so that is awesome and very 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 important then we have drawn that way by Alyssa sussman I like that last name. Um, so this is about Haley, who is confident, ambitious, and she wants to be a director, and she gets an internship. And one question remains, will Haley conform the expectations of her idol, where she risks blossoming her relationship and her future to prove that she's exactly as talented as she thinks she is? So all about an up-and-coming director. So that's awesome. And the last one I have is She Who Rides the Storm by Caitlin Sangster. Look at this intense cover. I love it. So this one, you guessed it, is a fantasy. Long ago, shape-shifting monsters ruled the Commonwealth. A healer, a runaway member, a snotty archaeologist, a girl desperate to escape. All four are out to steal the same cursed sword and rumored to be at the very bottom of the tomb. But of course, the some treasure should never be seen in the light of day and some secrets are best left buried. Sounds really interesting. So a lot of really awesome books this month that I'm very excited to check out. Which ones will I check out first? I don't know. That's why I always ask you guys to help me out because I never know. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to know if you have read any of these, what your thoughts on them, and things like that are. Um, again, if you haven't checked out Book of the Month, I highly recommend you do so. I'll leave all the links and stuff down below for you to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. <music>